so sorry for starting out very very late. Um, just like okay. we had two of you that got drunk, but that's why it's here to start our retirement schedule. So uh, we are going to be starting shortly. And today we have three people meeting, and uh, we'll be coming up shortly. So two of you will be going first, and we'll come up. So yeah. So um, for those of us who are here for the first time, this is Kitch Friday, my name is Tim Bajun, and I'm a journalist at TechPoint Africa. So the idea here is that early stage entrepreneurs just come and then we share their ideas. So you will see a few people here who just have ideas, if not the interview. So I, I think it's just fair that the questions we ask them will be different from the questions you ask them who have already started. So that we will just have ideas, they haven't started anything. So that's um, that's like one section. You also have people who have already started. They probably begun work on the product or their uh, on their ideas, and then you can you basically ask them questions one day, once they pitch. So each person is going to have about 25 minutes to pitch, and then the moment you're done, you get questions. So I think people have been here for who have come previously understand that we go to pitch, and then you get questions. And um, we'll try to limit the questions to probably four for each person because of time. So just one question. Do not ask more than one question. So we have enough time. So we are starting immediately and show me. Let's have it. Uh, my name is Chibubi as you already said. Uh, talk about comfy. I'm trying to find a slide about so basically, we're not trying to add, Comfy is a car, car pulling service. Yeah. It's a car pulling service and um, we're not trying to add more cars to the society. We're trying to maximize the ones that are already in this flight. And um, Comfy is like, yeah, so um, I guess we use buses a lot and I hate to be in the bus because there's noise. People are shouting, that might like, change, there's a lot of, but I have to use the bus because I don't have a car. And um, it's discomforting sometimes. I have kind of like big shoulders, and if I see that, you try to have to do like this so that I'm not stressing the next person, the next person is stressing me. And then um, taking Uber everywhere I go, taking buses, um, my cost of transport can buy a car in a year. Taking buses, yeah. So imagine I'm doing that with Uber, going wherever I was going to every day. Um, I'd probably be buying a Chihuahua. <laughs> <It's the next laughs> time. Uh, a web-based platform where computers can share rides with other individuals headed the same direction. So the concept is every time I go towards Lakey, I'm always looking out of the car or the bus and I'm seeing a lot of cars going or coming that are literally just the rider. Now coming back, I always see some people who pick passengers on the way. And I'm wondering, these guys are willing to take people. Some people are willing to take um, passengers into their cars. Yeah, but the problem is security and then the admin is trying to collect money from them and want to break their side mirror and all of that. So how about we make it a proper service? Yeah. I live in um say Okiafa, Ejibo area and I'm going to Lekki every day. I know I work in Lekki, so I need to go there every day morning and then I come back at night or in the evening and um, I live for work by say five thirty. Yeah. And there are like four other persons that live for work by five thirty and one of them has a car. Yeah. He isn't stressing any, he's not doing any extra stress, he's just going to work. But then he has the opportunity of making extra money from me and three other people who are going in the same direction as he. Yeah, and we get to have comfort. I can properly take a call in the car without having to tell the person to call me later and then miss my business opportunity. Whatever it is I want to do in that quiet space. Um, travel comfort in the same way. Uh, yes. I get to meet sensible people, not some guys who are selling. I'm a business person, I say also. I'm not trying to discriminate on anybody, but basically, you get to me as well while you're inside that car sharing with the person. Uh, next question. Uh, would you use. I was trying to use Airbnb's um, pitch deck model. So at this point, they showed some figures that I did not have. So I was now at. Park, please. I was basically asking if you would like to use the service daily. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, in Lagos here, there are 20 million people. 10 million commutes every day. Um, 1 million cars on the road. 5,000 possible clients every month. Some of these figures were just from my head. Uh, next slide. 
we take a 15% commission, when Ponzi starts, we like to take a 15% commission per trip, or per, like two and four year per trip. And based on the fact that it's 5,000 possible clients in a month, we believe that you're having 100,000 trips every month. That's basically saying two and fro, uh, times four people in the car, sometimes it could be a CNI, it could be more, and then these guys are going to work five days a week, times four weeks. So the total would round up to 100,000 trips. And from my area to Lekki using public transport and trying to use BRT to maximize how much you're spending, it's going to cost 1,300. And 15% of that should be around 195 Naira. 100,000 trips a month would be roughly 19.5 million in revenue. Next slide. So um, these are possible competitors, uh, competition. Both could decide to see that, oh, these people, they're doing well, and then they decide, oh, how about we add that to the uh, um, list of services? Um, some of these other companies have actually failed, and uh, they have to switch to something else. Because um, let's use a uh, nice thing go my way. They probably saw that it was impossible to find four persons going the same direction every time, at any time of the day. But we are certain that four people are going the same direction every time, at the beginning of the day, and almost at the end of the day. Next slide. Uh, competitive advantage, free rides. If you refer us, you get a free ride. Daily trips to and fro. Um, consistency, the fact that you are sure that these people are going to go every day. Um, pay data. The payment can be done monthly at the end of each month. Uh, networks, like I said before, you can relate to people who you meet in the car after a certain period of time. Uh, security. These people will have like where they are going to, they have office spaces they are going to. So all their databases of where they work and who they work for, everybody's data is compiled. So nobody is going to rob you inside the cars while you are going or while you are coming. Uh, time waiting. It's like school bus. When you go to, like back then, junior secondary school and secondary school, you use school buses and they get to wait for you for like 30 minutes. If you don't come, you still pay, but the, the bus goes away. Um, next slide. Thank you. I'm done. Right. Okay, so the first part is the VR script, and now we, we get to the part where we ask questions. Um, if you have any questions, if I want to, um, nobody from this side. Okay, let's start with this. Okay, hi. Um, great work. It's actually something that I've thought about before, but I never get to it. Um, so I drive, and I see that problem as well. In fact, uh, there's been a couple of times that I've accented to, you know, maybe I like just stop at the bus and try to carry people. Uh, but you know, the Nigerian problem, everybody thinks that we're maybe like a big or something like that. And I also remember that there was a time I was trying to see somebody, a friend of mine was in the car, and then it was like, ah. I don't think you should do that. I was like, oh, why do you think so? It was like, one of his friends got his car jacked by somebody he picked up on the road. And, you know, he was just trying to help. And then they got somewhere, they got out of they collected the car from him. And, you know, since then, I haven't done that anymore. And so I wonder if you have already thought about that particular problem. Yes. And, yeah, how so you're basically, one of the things in the previous slide was the fact that security is going to be taken care of. The people that we are taking in, like, uh, we get to know where you work. Okay. This particular set of four persons will be traveling with you or be committing with you every day. It's not like it's a new face every day. How do you pay for the service? How do I pay for the service? 
is it cheaper than uh, Uber Boat? And uh, how, you know, how, how is it, how is the payment method different from Uber Boat? And of course, uh, normal yellow buses. And then um, the second question, please answer that first. That just okay, so um, regarding payment method, um, when I was trying, when I was still very strongly thinking about this, I asked a lot of friends and I was wondering like, would you want to pay more? And I'm asking you to, would you want to pay more? If you had the opportunity to um, get to wherever your work area is in a very comfortable manner, would you be willing to pay more than your normal bus transport cost? Or would you want to pay less? Do you get? So um, if you notice, I used 1,300. I said this was of my already, like the cost I spent trying to like ensure that I use BRT and I use like vehicles that maximize um, cost. Yeah. Now that's the total cost going and coming back to my home. Yeah. So I'm saying, if we agree that this is the exact fee we'll still be charging, yeah. This guy, is, he says he drives. He's not going to spend anything extra. He just has four people who are not disturbing him. They're just inside the car and he's driving to where he's going to. Yeah. Except on situations where there are conflicts and all of that. So he's just driving to work. The same way he drives to work, drive back, and he's making extra money. Yeah. So whether it is the same exact price you would have paid if you had used a bus company, a public vehicle, yeah, or it's a little bit higher, there will always be people who will be willing to pay at least the current price which they are already spending. So, so second question is, um, you already spoke about Go My Way, Go My Way Field, right? And your business model is just a little bit slightly different from Go My Way's uh, product. What lessons have you learned from that? Like I said, they were hoping that at any time of the day you come out of your house, yeah, there will always be three other people who are going that direction. We were um, saying that at the beginning of the day, at 6.30 a.m., 7 a.m., yeah, there are people that are definitely going your way. At the end of work hours, there are people that are definitely coming back your way. So we're just thinking, if you have a car and you're driving, yeah, we're just saying people from your house or from your area that are going to the same area where you're going to, they will always be going that direction. So those four persons who you get to have in your car will be your like till probably a year. They will always be your client, except there's an issue. Okay. Sorry, just a question around that. Um, you made mention about um, getting people's data where they work. You know, these days people are most data sensitive. Are you aware that the um, third party cookies are very fair enough? So, um, like both or over global companies, they don't request for such. So how are you going to do to get that? Then, the other hand, I was just thinking if you could tell, tell me you would um, and pick a particular place to start with, right? Let's say people that are working in VI, right? And you could actually walk around that place. So maybe from mainland to VI, maybe let's say from like a uh, analysis based on yeah, yeah. So you can start. You can you can just school out in a kind of a focus group and work with them first before you now spread so out. Definitely, that's the goal. You always have to start small, definitely. Okay, so uh, I'm just saying this. Um, what if I'm living in Ikorodu, the other guy is living in Yaba, how are you going to oh, okay. fix all of so, this? So, I mean, yeah, be... a, a friend of mine asked me to start really small. I'm starting small. Um, coming this way, I have always have to get to Oshun. Yeah. Now, if you get to Oshun by 7 p.m., 7 p.m. You see like a whole lot of people coming from either Oshodi or Yanobulu. You see a lot of people at those bus stops. Now, all of them are coming from one direction, Third Milan. Right? Yeah. So definitely those same persons are going back to Third Milan the next day and they're going to Eki, wherever it is. So the goal is, if at all I was going to use like, I intended on doing this on my own, with, like I wanted to do a trial. Yeah. So I'll print out flyers, yeah, and then I go to Oshodi bus stop. Or I go to Yanoburo yeah, at that 7 p.m. when they are back from work, from the stressful experience inside those BRTs, I mean inside those buses that they've had. Yeah. Now, those are, that's my like, particular target. Like, I'm very sure that those people are going back the next day and they're definitely going to come back to Yanoburo. That's it, like the next evening. Do you get So um, I'm pitching to them that we could provide you the service of taking you from Yanoburo since you always come here, yeah, taking you to your workplace, maybe in Lekki Phase 1, and from Lekki Phase 1 back to Yanoburo. 
Yeah, and, um, I just want to draw some comments on, on Go My Way. So one issue with Go My Way was the issue of um, offline, um, offline transactions. So how would you solve that? How offline transactions, especially with what you're proposing now? You're saying that these people are people that you already know yourself. So now imagine if you're doing the first transaction you will pay to your bank. The next transaction, how are you going to be sure that you're not just going to just move your money? One of the benefits that we'll be offering is, um, we're probably like your lawyers, yeah? The day you get to have issues with the right, with the people that you picked up, yeah? You need somebody to say, oh, this was the person that was wrong, or this was the person that was wrong. Like, basically find out who was wrong. So in that sense, now, when that wrong person is taking me, how do you easily get somebody else to get to fill that space? Yeah. And then we already have all these people. I, I get what you're saying. Well, I'm not a techni technical person. So let me... Yeah, I'm not... I'm not questioning you. <laughs> so I'm what, 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 what is it you say? So I'm not yeah, commenting on that. I, I have actually thought of that too, but I haven't really like sat down to like find people. But I feel like the fact that we, we have their databases already, yeah, both the riders, we could easily take out the rider from the platform. And then they will always be, they will always be stealers. They will yeah, always be okay. every business. What, so, I don't some of what I'm saying is that you can't like go my way. That was one of the major issues because you find out that people who just the first ride is to it happens with them. With both and, no, and it's, mm -hmm. it's not like you know go my way. These are frequent um um routes. Mm -hmm. So if I put the first uh, right, even it's the driver that suggests it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just I'm just I'm just I'm just commenting on that. Not uh, all that. It's okay. Yeah, there is, there is a business model made that the, the rider will not be able to take it as a full time job. Well, I, I, I don't want to stress, so yeah, in the future, the normal Uber model could be still the other real where after you're done with that exact time space jobs, where like six, one of, one of the ways I wanted to start this was to use a couple of my friends who were Uber riders, yeah, uh, I wanted them to do their first trip, some of them, if you're my friends, if they want to um, start their trip, they always go to a particular location. So, say we're coming from Okiafa, they want to go to Surulere because they feel like there are a lot of yeah, there are a lot of short trips that happen in Surulere. Yeah. So he drives down to Surulere and stays there. So I'm saying there are people who are coming from Okiafa yeah, that are going to Surulere. How about while you are going to Surulere to go and start working? Yeah, you take these people to work. Yeah, you walk around Surulere as long as you like. Yeah, once it's 5:30, you are at a particular location where you can take them back. Um, any other question? Hmm? I'm saying I think that model is not supposed to be a full time model. Even both and Uber model is not a full time model. It depends on the right that are taking it as full time. Alright, so I think in the absence of any other questions, that will be all. Thank you very much. Alright, so next question will be begun. You'll be preaching on both. So, Each of you know the friends that we have being able to participate in our teaching process, basically. 
Um, as you know, in a typical Nigerian wedding, you would likely get things that you don't want. Maybe things like pots, things like, you know, you send things and all of that. These are things that you really do not need, right? And so we didn't want that, and we we're looking for a way to avoid that in our wedding. Next slide, please. And so we decided to build the simplest wish list app as a way to tell our loved ones that if you guys were thinking about gifting us anything, these are the kind of things that we prefer, right? So that's what we wanted to do. So one of the things that, hey, sorry. Um, yeah, so in what we built at the time, it was a way to add items that we wanted from anywhere, right? Any vendor that we wanted to add items from, we can just add and say, oh, we want this particular thing, we would like for you to get it to us. We could also receive contributions from anywhere. And so, one of the key things about what we built at the time was that if you wanted something that cost about maybe 500k, for instance, one person doesn't have to pay the full amount of that. So one person can drop 10k, another person 5k, depending on the you know pocket size of you know each of the loved ones that we had. And then lastly, we could withdraw the funds at any time that we were ready. So all of that funds were stored securely in a wallet, and then we could take that out when we were ready for that. Um, yeah, thank you. So we used that. Uh, we shot out our loved ones, and you know the wedding went by. However. Shortly after the wedding, our family people came back to us and said, oh, we'd like to use this for our own wedding as well, our own birthday as well. And so we're like, hmm, okay, so maybe we are not the only ones trying to avoid this whole problem of getting on one set gates, duplicate gates, and all of that. And so we decided that, okay, maybe we should actually launch this for other people to use, right? Um, next slide, please. Um, and so we built it out for other people to use. We just put it out there, no marketing, nothing. We just put it out there. And just organically, we started to pick up by itself. So far, we've had about a thousand people use it for different use cases, from birthday to wedding to anniversary to Christmas. You know, just very, very interesting. Um, and then we processed about five million naira in cash gifts on the platform, and then we've had about ten use cases, like I mentioned earlier, from birthday to wedding. You know, just pretty much very, very interesting ways we've seen. Next slide, please. Um, and so, but however, in that traction that I talked about, we saw that more people picked up the products for wedding, right? So we saw birthday, we saw baby registry, we saw a bunch of different use cases, but we saw that there were more weddings happening on the platform. So basically, people whose wedding were coming up like ours, they were creating it to let their loved ones know that if you wanted to gift us anything, please make sure you look at this, right? Uh, and so we decided to build for that particular market. We just expand and build more for that. And so we did further research to just see that, okay, if we even want to build for this market, how big is it? Is there really any opportunity there? And so we did some research and we landed on this number here. There's about 5.6 million weddings happening in Nigeria every year, right? So that's based on research from the cable engine. Um, and so you can see the calculations here. So the cable engine estimates that there's 200 weddings happening at the Ikoyi registry every day, right? And so we decided to even have a conservative number of that. And every number of them. 200 of them. This is 20. So I'm coming to that. So there's two on there. So we decided to use a conservative number of that. Let's say their number is not even correct. Let's say it's just 20 weddings are happening at all the 774 carbon lines across the country. Right. So if you multiply that by 365 and then by 774, you yeah, arrive at that number. Just you know, based on the research that we can find. As you know, Nigeria is not very, very documented. So that's that what we have to do. So next slide, please. Um, and so, based on that market that we're trying to build for now, we're trying to build an end-to-end -end system that takes care of everything. So, we're going to build for Nigeria. What we mean by building for Nigeria is that many of the wedding management systems that you have out there right now, they are used by Oingo people. And the way they do weddings in Nigeria and Africa in extension is very much different from how they do it abroad. And so, being Nigerians ourselves, we're trying to build things around the peculiarities of planning a wedding in Nigeria. Right? Um, and so, yeah, that's what building for Nigeria means. And then, all of the other parts of the system include things like guest management, smart RSVP, actual payments, which continue to be a headache. I have seen the same problem during my wedding. Quite a number of people have also complained about the same thing. And then souvenirs and Prince Marketplace, as you know, weddings in Nigeria are shared better. Souvenirs and then uh, printing, maybe access cards, or you know, all those other things is a huge part of everything that's going on. So the system we're building is going to have all of these things that I've talked about. And then, of course, the wedding gate registry, which is very started. Next slide. Um, and so the MVP for this pass is live right now. Uh, you can see what that looks like. And so we have about 25 companies on the wait list. We have about two wedding planners who are ready to use this and they want to get this out to their couples who are getting married this year. And then we have five early pages as well, ready paid to use the platform. So this is what it looks like. I'd love to give us a demo of that right now, but you can get to that. But this is just a, this is a live uh, mock-up of what that looks like. 
actually, so it's not an email. So this is this one will get to my uh, list last year. So we use them, and then they have like three tabs here: info, in the info tab, they're providing information about the wedding, and then whoever it is that's going to be invited to the wedding, they can come here, they can RSVP, um, and then you get all of that information on the back end, and then they can send you gifts as well in the same place. Um, and then this is what that schedule looks like, as you can see. Under the schedule, this is, as you know, in Nigerian weddings, there's usually like several events leading up to like the main day. In the case of like Nigeria, uh, Yoruba weddings, for instance, there's the engagement, there's maybe the introduction as well. Quite a number of things happening right now. So in the schedule, you can list all of that, um, and then you can put the dates, the time, the location, the dress code, uh, the, the dress code, the color code, and then somebody can add it to calendar. And you know, with a platform like this, there isn't a case of, oh, you forgot to attend the wedding, so you can add this to your calendar. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, next slide, please. Um, so the business model for what we're building and how we're prioritizing to now is that we're going to charge, we already do that, so the first piece here, we charge 3.5% on the gifts in the normal wish list that I talked about earlier. And now in the wedding system that we're building, there's $10 a month for the wedding provisions, right? So the five-day visas that I talked about earlier, they're paying us $10 per month leading up to their wedding. And then once the wedding ends, it's, you know, that's the end of that uh, payment cycle. And so based on that, we're putting a conservative number again that that 5.6 million that I talked about earlier, if we were to capture just about 10% of that, that puts us at 556,000 weddings uh, by 2024. And so if we make an average of $20 per couple, which is what we already made in any way, um, that would net us at around $11 million uh, by 2024, depending on you know, how much money we're able to put into marketing and all of that. Next slide, please. Um, and then, yes, we meet the team. This is myself, co founder and CEO, my partner, to do additional and then we'll give you a million to raise the product owner. That's it. I'll give you questions, feedback, and everything. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
don't you think it's a kind of, I don't know, forgive yeah. me guys, like, it's a kind of, some sense of entitlement, you telling me what I should give you. But in Nigeria, the way things are hard like this, I can't give you anything I want. Right? You don't need to put it out there and tell me, oh, this is what, I would just say you're not serious. Because you're not giving me money. That's my own, it's just my own thought, right? So, so, yes, you don't get a generation like that. So, yes, one of the issues that you plan to do by the way, you want to spend money. So, the most important thing is to get into the way of right? When you're purchasing a machine from somebody, you have an intent in mind. You want to either impress the person, you want to make the person happy, you want to give the, some, the person something valuable, right? Now, if you go ahead and spend all of that money and the person doesn't like it, it's a duplicate of what the person already has. I don't think anybody is going to be happy about, you know, finding out that what you gave me. I'm not even going to use it as well. I'm going to sell it. Right? That's, that's an assumption. You give someone gave you a gift. When I, like, how do you feel that I gave you a gift and you're not happy because you have those similar things at home? See the gift. Is it God? It's not an omnipresent that you know yourself. You yeah. understand? So, so I can I can give you anything I I feel or I have or whatever capacity I have to give you that. Unless there's a different case when I call you. What's your name? Sorry, Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know. But I can call you and say, guys, I have X Y Z budget. Or tell me what kind of gift you want for it. Let's be within X Y Z budget. Yeah. People do, right? I do it also. Then I can actually give you within that budget. But it's not everybody or not all the time you can do that that I give you and you're not happy. Yeah. Come on now. Sorry. Yes. I think I think you mentioned something about whatever you want to put in you can make contributions to what like you can put more even if it's ten thousand, five thousand, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So like if I put something on my wish list for my wedding and you want to give to Why don't you think you're monetizing your wedding? And then even people these days who say on their IV, please yes. monetize all this. Exactly. <laughs> so it's not. Yeah. That's how it's done. Well, it's not normal. I don't make a mistake. Yes, this wish list is a popular thing that's accepted by everybody. 
give people opportunity to design their wish list and then they can share it to their family and friends, to their social media pages. And you can even make like a barcode, scan and do, do just do that. In fact, you can link each item to each vendor that they might possibly get it from. So if, they, if, if you can do that, same wish list to you know, your colleagues, it eventually comes back to you and then they can patronize you to use your product and all that. I think that is more kind of acceptable than asking me to go to www. gift in your cash or something like that no, 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 for no. me to be able to right. contribute to The way you are talking about it right now is exactly how it works. Right. So you come on the platform, you build an account, you select what you are celebrating, whether it's your birthday, your wedding, whatever the occasion is, right? And then you put up a list and say, okay, my birthday or my wedding or whatever it is, these are the things that I'd like to get as a gift, right? And then you generate a barcode or a link or you know, whatever you want to share. Right? And then you go to how you converse with your community, right? Whether it's on WhatsApp or on Twitter or whatever it is that you're communicating with people, and then you share the link with them. And say, hey guys, my birthday is coming up on my wedding. If you wanted to gift me anything, please look at this list and then you're going to send something to me. Um, another very interesting thing that I wanted to mention is that um, there's an ongoing research in the UK um, that estimates that I think about £2 billion of gifts ends up in the landslides, uh, in the dump every year. That's an incredible number. Think about the damage to the environment of, you know, just because of your ego, you want to give somebody something and you don't want them to say anything about it. And then you end up throwing it away or you get out of the door, it's and then you throw it away and all of that, you know. So, they can, gifting can be a lot more. It can be a lot more intentional, right? And if there's anything that I've learned in my own marriage personally, many times you think that you want to do something for somebody and you think that they're going to be excited about that thing. But many times you need to pause and ask that person that, what would you like actually? I'm learning that in my marriage, right? There are so many times I want to do something out of the box for my wife, but that's not what she wants. And we have to get to that point where it's okay to ask somebody that, I'm not sure what you would like, can you give me ideas, can you nudge me in the direction? And this is the product that is going to help you get that. So the product is something that's evolving, right? So we are we are learning from how people's kitchen preference, right? We know that there are certain people who would still not go in this part of telling people that, oh, this is what I want. We know that there are certain people who want you to just come up with, oh, I got this thing for you, if you like it and stuff. And so we're thinking, we're constantly thinking about that and how we can innovate around that and make that process a lot more easy. But right now, this is where we are. Yeah, so to be honest, yes, he's quite a hard guy. <laughs> Anybody that wants to give you something yeah. and you put a list somewhere and doesn't lose that list, yeah. Is not in the average human being. <laughs> to be honest, like even though he might he has a point, yeah. but if you put a list somewhere to say that just in case so yeah. anybody that doesn't go there to say that let me just check, check. Yeah. just in case. I don't think that person falls in the average population size. <laughs> so, so yeah, this is the truth. First of all, the fact that you have traction is amazing. I think it's absolutely wonderful. But what I wanted to ask, I didn't really see in the slide was the founder product fit. Okay. Why are you building this? So you have a problem and yeah. you try to solve it. So in your team, yeah. who has solved similar problems or where have you stolen similar talents from? Okay. Either directly or indirectly. To yeah. say that oh, Maybe this person used to work at celebration, okay. for example. So he had the experience of gifting okay. and things like that. Yeah. So we stole him, mm -hmm. brought him to a box, yeah. and now he's probably head of growth or something. Yeah. What what the product founder fit? Yeah. What what's that like? Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Can you go to the previous slide, please? The previous slide. Yeah, so Olivia Williams, who is our product owner, you know, basically okay. the person we've been missing. Okay. She came from Showlog. Uh, Showlog is sort of like a digital platform. Oh. Well. Oh. So, yeah, she works with us. Alright, so you have some experience in yeah. that? Definitely. Yes, please. 
So you know people love to know people that live like that decision. People love to know that this person gives me decision. So is there a place, is there a way of showing best people that give to me this thing that we Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what I've shown us, right, is the, the contributor side. Right. So in the back end, as a user or the person whose celebration is coming up, there's a place where you can see, oh, this person sends you this, this person sends you that, and then you can follow up with them. There's also the option for people to do it anonymously if they don't want you to know that. But I was the one that got to this stuff, which is something that we've also seen. And so we introduced that for other people to be able to do it anonymously as well. So yeah, to answer your question. Yeah, sorry, um, yeah. uh, all right, I just wanted to support what we said. Okay. Um, I got married in 2020 and till dates, yeah. I and my wife still look at some of these gifts and I always have my The guy is talking about exactly. selling all those things out, but then on my status, yeah. please buy at give me price. <laughs> 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 I think this is very, very, very good. And I wish you had come up with seen this platform before go mad. Would have been a very it's not a I think we should not have this <laughs> Yes, please. Uh, is there a provision for um, cash gifts, yeah. like any amount you have, yeah. in case I want to give three, five? The minimum you can go is uh, 115. I don't think you should give me the minimum. <laughs> <laughs> When you send someone you need to make contributions or yeah. do a gift, mm -hmm. does so the person need to sign up? Mm -hmm. They don't need to sign up. Very stress free. Just go straight. Is there a maximum for cash that you need to do? Yeah, it's, it's just currently capped at 500,000 per sign, right? Right now. But we're currently working on that. That just based on restrictions from the CBM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. that argument as well. And so we're currently working on our fund protection bit. Um, so that so that's why we currently have that limitation. We're trying to send that out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get you. Sorry, I wanted to ask you a question. Right. Um, thank you, it's a wonderful idea. Thank you very much. And I wanted to ask if I have this on you once you buy it. Is it like part of private corners or app where you just put it for you and your friends? So anybody can just come and see that I have it and then. Um, yeah, there's private to you. If you don't share the link with somebody, they will get to it. Yeah, so it's not like we have a public place where anybody can just go and see, oh, what does this person want? Okay, so what if two people that like they want to marry now, mm -hmm. and when they don't want to marry, they just like to take advantage of They will be on something.
think about the delivery experience in a way that once they deliver that item to you, it to be maybe for a wedding or for a birthday, for instance, but delivering it to you in a way that it feels like a gift, not just an item being delivered from the event or that kind of thing. So we are working on that. Okay, so I don't think we're taking any more questions. Thank you so much. So we have one more, uh, one more question. <coughs> Yeah, okay, hello everyone. Hello. Uh, I'm Wachukun Onsu and I'm the founder of Block Plots. Um, I've been a real estate developer for the past five years. I'm a member of CORE and Nigerian Society of Engineers, NSE. And I'm pitching the idea of Block Plots. Um, first of all, you guys are from, I hope you guys had a good time. <laughs> also, I mean, if you guys. I hope you guys are also gifted, and you guys are not gifted, please visit his platform and click the link. It's very important. Um, so, yeah, um, Blog Plot. So, um, in a nutshell, Blog Plot is a set of smart contracts implementing the idea of uh, tokenized asset issuance and exchange with a focus on real estate. Um, once we help users own fractions of real estate assets, verify them on the blockchain. Um, the users who are, you know, token holders can sell off their assets whenever they want instantly on our decentralized exchange. Um, so before I go on to, you know, talk about our problem which we identified for building this product, I would actually like to ask us a question, two questions actually. Um, and then now, you know, because I realize I've thrown a few buzzwords around, you know, tokenized assets and some other things. I'll just explain three. So the first question for you guys is, how many of us here own real estate assets? Just be honest with you. I don't, so my hands are down. Do you do? Do you guys do this guy? Because. <laughs> oh, nice one, nice one. So, yeah. So, how many of us do not, but we actually wish to own real estate assets? Just to be your answer. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, um, so, I mean, we are all together. So, um, for as many of us as put our hands up here, so, um, it's going to be of our best interest to be taking attention to the product. So, and I know, like, if I ask we all here that place our hands up, what's the problem? Why, why don't you own assets since you want to actually own it? The problem is that it's expensive. Real estate assets are, you know, they're really expensive, and that has, you know, segregated lots of people globally who want to actually own real estate assets. Um, so, on that problem, this is the problem slide. On that problem, which we identified was that, um, you know, the settlement time is, you know, lengthy. You know, before you um, you know complete your whole deed of assignment, um, uh, certificate of ownership, and all those governance consents, it takes months six, seven, eight, nine months. And also, um, the real estate market is illiquid. When you buy assets today, your assets is tied down, your funds, your capital is tied down for like a long period of time 10 years, 5 years, 2 years, depends on you know how long you want to hold your asset and sell. And when you want to sell, um, you have to get someone who matches the value of, of what you've tagged your assets to, right? So, in comes block plots and um, our solution. So, one of the solutions with, with which we've rendered to you know our potential users are, are is that um, you know we want to now fractionalize ownership of real estate assets. So, what we've done is we've brought the value of this asset on chain tokenize them and perform the security token issuance on our platform. Um, so this now reduces the cost of entry into the real estate market for users who want to own and earn from real estate investments. Um, another solution which we have rendered is uh, you know, our, from our decentralized exchange. Um, we have made real estate markets really liquid, wherein if you own your assets today, your, your token now, you can easily swap it for however, like, Heard it for like two months or one week, you can easily swap it on a decentralized exchange easily. Um, our decentralized exchange uses a constant product, yeah, man, I'll come to that. Um, another you know, solution which we read out is that um, it is really the assessment time is now faster in traditional real estate and financing. Assessment time, like before you can buy an asset from you now, real estate asset from you before we do our whole, our whole um, transfer of ownership in the land. No three and registry. It takes like months, a long time. But now on the blockchain, 
Um, settlement time is instant, five minutes to 15 minutes. Your token has is now under my ownership, and then I'm earning from, from that. So our market, so um, some of the, there are actually some you know, major organizations participating in real estate and um, tokenization. Some of them are Santander Bank of Spain, JP Morgan, um, sorry, please, next slide. Um, World Economic Forum and Bank of China, HSBC. And so, um, so uh, obviously, total market cap of real estate is um, around 300 and something, as long as $30 trillion, and then crypto market cap is just north of 900 billion. Um, so, our target market for these are you know, users like we who want to you know, own and earn from real estate assets but cannot because of the high cost of entry into the real estate market. And also, we are now targeting you know, traditional real estate companies who want to you know, also tokenize the asset and you know, be able to deliver more um, uh, products to the market. And also, you know, the fact that the real estate market is really illiquid, it has created a ripple effect where there is a housing deficit in globally. Globally, in Nigeria, the housing deficit stands at 29 million units of homes. In Africa, the activity of such is just around 80 million units of homes in deficit. Um, uh, so yeah, so the market size um, globally for real estate is like around three point something trillion dollars, and for Africa, it's just around 140 billion dollars. So next slide, please. Um, our target region for now is going to be Africa and Nigeria. We're going to start from Africa and then expand to you know, other African countries. So for our products, we have um, on like the investor side, which, which are our users, we have um, our marketplace where the security token offering is being offered. We have a portfolio where you know, portfolio and wallet where you have access to your stable coins and all your assets under your portfolio. And we have our decentralized exchange, obviously, where you can easily swap your assets with stable coins. Um, for our follow-up products for that, we have we are working on our P2P lending. And yeah, for the investor side, we go back to the next slide, please. We have the KYC and anti money laundering system. We have uh, this is now for the real estate asset issuers. We have um, the security token issuance and management system where you can offer it to the users. And um, and yeah, so for our follow-up product for that, we have ten tenant management solution and property management solution. We are building this as well. Next slide. So um let so we'll just you know explain tokenization in just a little bit. So it happens, it first happens, it happens on chain and off chain. So off chain it happens where you know real estate companies come to our platform to tokenize our assets. Tokenizing our assets, we, we are block blocks, we do due diligence for these assets. And then after approval, um, is, is an SPV is incorporated. So on our on-chain, our security token offering is now being offered. And when the source cap is reached, the stable coin is released from, from an escrow wallet to the asset issuer's wallet. And then ownership of you know, this asset is now transferred to users who have participated in this our security token offering. And then, um, so the income is being transferred, income from your wide value of assets is being, is being transferred month on month. And then you can, as a token holder, you can sell off your assets whenever you want to have a centralized exchange. Next two slides. So these are some of our competitors. Um, <coughs> we have lot proxy, realty, fractional, token, and then block plots. Um, these are you know, some of the features which I believe are necessary to build this to, to offer this sort of service. Um, we all you know, have blockchain technology, aside from fractional, fractional are a YC Bank company. Um, none have with centralized governance, we do, it's on our development. Decentralized governance is um, you know, where we are having to manage every asset which on the platform. You get to vote on party decisions and manage property generally. Um, we, we all have it, we don't all have it centralization, just realty and we. Realty uses Uniswap to 
for users to be able to swap their tokens and we have our CPUs as ourselves. Um, we all offer fractional ownership. We all, we don't all have um, real estate engineering, just we, I'm a civil engineer myself. And we all support, we don't all support crypto as well. We do, it's real team. And then none of these are in Africa, just we. Next slide. Um, so, our products and services were B2B to B2C. To um, B2B to C is like um, real estate companies come to our platform and they will fight our users. And our marketing strategy is like uh, we use uh, social media, Discord, email marketing, and real estate communities. Um, so these are token metrics. So we, um, so on our decentralized exchange, um, we are liquidity going to be provided by liquidity providers who are supposed to, who are going to incentivize to you know always keep providing liquidity. So this is why we released, we decided to release the token. And as you can see here, they have their pool rewards of eight million of plus or five of token, which is a hundred million, eight million total. We plan to launch our token around towards the end of the second quarter of next year, of this year, sorry. Next slide. Um, so obviously our token utilities like governance, which we used to vote, and um, speaking and rewards for, for liquidity providers, um, and incentives for maintaining liquid and asset token pools. Next slide. So these are our team, myself and the team lead. Um, Somto is our DevOps engineer, Steven is our full staff, Michael is our blockchain developer, and Harrison is our front end developer. Next slide. Um, so product product on our suite. So um, we all, you know, we all agree that um, you know um, tokenization is actually going to change the game in the real estate market and investment. Um, myself and real estate developer, we have in our team also by extension software engineers, web three researchers, and blockchain developers who believe that code is law. Um, so yeah, basically that's just it. Next slide. That's all. And so yeah, you, we have not fully launched, so we want everyone to join our wait list while we, before we launch. So please just scan the barcode and join our wait list. Thank you very much. Please, you guys can scan, 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 scan. Please, you guys can scan. We still, I assure them that you know there's going to be a spike in our wait list. Please, before you ask questions, and I would like to make questions, please. Ah, let's ask questions. Ah, okay, cool. Okay, cool, so we just need to on this page. Alright, so uh, there's, one, there's one question. So, I would like people to ask as many questions as possible. So, uh, my first question is the issue of Ownership and uh, as you know, you made mention right here, getting what is important to document your land uh, your properties and yeah. very, very, very yeah, yeah, yeah. You made mention of one year, some properties uh, for CEO goal for some states goes as much as it's nine years. Mm -hmm. And you made mention a lot more than that. Yes, and you made mention that you just can do that within five minutes. So this is my question for you. Yeah. <laughs> if I desire to bring a particular property on your platform. And you said you can. I don't want to the government on those things. So, as a the CEO so, as it is. Yeah, so here is the thing. We are not taking out CEO pool. CEO pool is still existent. Okay. It's still existent in real life. We are just trying to make real estate trading faster and simpler through the power of the blockchain. So, um, is, is the, that property, which is tokenized on our platform, it still has a CEO pool. It still has its governor's consent, it still has every other thing with like physical documents, but your ownership is digital and your you know transactions are digital. You can own and earn um, from those assets digitally. Okay, but you, you know when you buy a property, yeah, and um, whether it's government consent or still government, you meant to transfer the property, you are supposed to go back to the same process whereby you see your You can't just if I so, like, if, so if there, okay, I look. No. Okay. So, so let's say for instance, 1,000 people property, the yeah. second token is offered and 1,000 people own this property. For that property, to another user. Now, now you're not just you're not the property. The property is owned by the organization. It's owned by the decentralized organization. 
So for that property to be sold to another user, everyone has to agree that this property should be sold. And then that's when the actual transfer of ownership is done with the government. Okay, now, so let's for example, I have a property and I've listed the property on block contracts. Yeah. And, um, maybe it's my father's property. And, uh, there are several of us in the family. I have access to the documents. And I've already listed the sold property to one thousand. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you are sold the property. You just said that you are sold the property. No, we are sitting on the first, that was the property. Yeah. But because I have access to the document, I should my brother, brother John, that was it. Uh, see me. You committed exactly. fraud, not us. No, 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 I said me committed fraud. I assist you. No, 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 no. So, so no, 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 this is just an example. This is just an example. You and your brother sold the property, uh, right? And you now went through their back and sold it to another person, not to, not to a blockchain party. Your platform has stayed to me. That's, that, that's Hold on. You sold it to another person, not to, to a blockchain platform. You committed fraud, not we. You assisted me. No, it's not that. No, it's not that. No, it's not that. Wait, 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 wait. I think that was the AML. AML 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 who conducted the fraud? They come to the platform. So if your bank, if your, if your money gets missing, EFCC is not going to let's say Mr. E is as free money. They will come to your bank and request that something be done about it. So you did technically you did commit the fraud, but it was committed on your platform. So how do you prevent? I guess that yes. how do you prevent? Like well, I mean, for a user to actually, you know, want to tokenize or like this a platform, a token, an asset on our platform, we would have to do our due diligence. And doing our due diligence, I actually mentioned this here, is a ton of chain. So that's that, that's probably the process. We will have to do our due diligence and make sure these assets have all the documentation and everything intact before we actually have to tokenize it. It's part of our process. Okay. So you have a question? Yeah. All right, so uh, what was that? I wish my person can go in line of what I'm taking it to open direction. Um, I'm not a fan of blockchain. Okay? Why? Okay, just go on. You know, I can why. I'm not a fan of blockchain. Maybe tomorrow I'll be convinced to embrace the idea of blockchain. But I'm here today. Why you are teaching Right? I need to understand what you are teaching. Right. To me, what you just did, uh, I felt overloaded. Like, if I went, like, all this buzzword you are throwing around kind of feels, you know, so much. So, one, I have like a suggestion, and then I have a question. Okay, so this one I will give you is probably for someone like me that might eventually want to embrace blockchain because this thing is a new. Uh, kind of thing that people are trying to embrace. Uh, probably you should find like a video, one minute video, storytelling, explaining A, B, C. Yeah, so, so, so sorry, story. sorry to, this is actually one of the benefits of signing up to our release. We have, we learn about defined medicine and blockchain technology. It's actually there, it's one of the benefits of so signing I don't want to more brand in my, in my body. No, trust me, I'm not going to say you random oh, yes. Like I don't even want to know. No. I want you know, you know why I said, the reason why I said, I'm not scanning until I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you are here. So I don't have to scan before I understand. You are here, you should make me understand. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as I'm, saying, as I'm saying, before I can even take a further step to do this, I, may have, I must have understood what you are trying to say and I'm interested. Yeah, right? So, before I get to that point, that I'm trying to sell to you, Right. If it's just one minute, storytelling is very key. At least for a brand like yours. Yeah. Storytelling is very key. Say it in a way that everybody will understand. Okay. Someone like me is going to understand. Okay. So that's just yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's where I understand that. Now, secondly, there are two things with this. There's blockchain and there's real estate. Yes. These are two difficult things that we are making together. Ordinary people. Uh, 
it's not it's not an idea you pick on the street and it's there on time. Yeah, right. So um what what are you doing to ensure that people actually pick up this thing and then work work alongside with you, you know, invest in uh in your company or whatever it is. And then again, if I'm going to if I have twenty five thousand naira, the way how am I going to invest twenty five thousand naira on your platform? Okay. And how is it going to be for me? Just use that. Okay. So one of our smart contracts is states that um, you know the minimum um, ownership for an asset is the hundred USD, hundred USD stable coin, and then the maximum ownership is ten percent of the asset. Mm -hmm. We cut that ten percent so that. Um, to promote centralization so that no one person can just decide whatever should be done with that property randomly. So like the you know, maximum is like 10 people must own a property. So 25,000 for now, because we have actually carried out this study before. No, that's just an example. Okay. I'm just saying what we okay. should if I have, okay, you said minimum is $100. 100 years, Okay, yes. I have 100 dollars. Yes. What would true harm me to invest that $100 and the benefits in the houses? That's what I'm saying. Okay, good. Um, so, let me give an example. Sujimoto, we all know Sujimoto here, he uses a lot of real estate. So he completes an asset and he wants to sell it. He wants to sell the entire asset he has built. And he comes to our platform, he comes, we negotiate with him to say, sell this asset to us. And we have users who are going to you know, buy this asset. Let's say the asset is cost at them a million dollars for the total value of the asset. And now, you know, not everyone has that million dollars to buy this asset. We now, decide to offer it to a thousand people. A thousand people. So a thousand people divided by a million dollars is one thousand. So in this case now, an asset, a token, is going to be worth a thousand dollars. So if you if you have that token, just one, whatever rent is going to be collected on that asset for a year is going to be transferred to your wallet, to your holdings, for as long as you've held that asset. That took on. The moment you decide to sell, you stop earning from that asset. And that's good, it's better than the narration you gave me. This is a storytelling that you Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who is the new owner of the asset? 1,000 people. Yes, 1,000 people. It's a community of like owners, not just trees. Well, actually, you want it. Your company is not about it, actually. Yes. Technically, so I mean, if you want if that, that asset is going to be it could be registered as block dot DAO. You really like it. <laughs> yes. I mean, not, not yes. really, not really, because like we don't even have any, we don't have any right over the property. But asset owners can, we have the documents, yes. If all asset owners decide to sell that asset in real life, they will send it. Wait. It's not, we are just a special group for that to happen. Sorry, everyone has a trust in that situation. Sorry, every property must be in a single display. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Jim Moto owned it initially. Now, who owns the property now? No, not that's not the now. Not plus plus it. now. Not plus 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 it. So now, not if you, if, if, yes, so if you now are a part of, let's say, a thousand people that own the property, that own the token, you guys can decide to, you guys can decide whatever you want to do with that asset. You can decide to register it under a new name, not block plus. You can decide to do whatever you want to do with that asset. Say again. One thousand people, Zoom. No, no, no. So, so, so let me just let me let me walk you through how it centralized or commons organization works. Okay, so I'm asking all these questions. I'm thinking it might be better, like he has been insisting that you own the property. It might actually be better for you to own, it might be better for your business to own the property or give them the chance to be able to invest in own via with the property. Alright, so I would just like to walk you through how um, that was a suggestion. I would like to walk you through how it DAO works. So if you own the token, you are entitled to come proposals for that asset. Proposals would mean anything, rental increments, um, repainting, renovations, whatever it is, you are entitled to come up with so get, um, proposals for that asset. And every token holder for that asset is entitled to vote on whatever should be done with that asset. 51% um, uh, vote count wins the day. On whatever proposal is carried out. 
Okay, so um, I'll I'll be there too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, so my question is that when you first got or first the first question you asked was who won the uh, who won the CG last week? Um, and then who would like to win. So my question is it seems you are pitching to or you want an average person to be to own the real estate. But from this we also have to go to the police. Or like digital assets. Okay. So here's the thing. There's a saying you can't teach an old person new tricks. So my dad, for instance, does real estate, and then the son is like, oh, there's a platform, and it's like, oh, cryptocurrency, don't bring that to me. So it's like, this is for people who like crypto and also want to believe this. But can, can I get a platform where? I just want to invest in real estate and that's it. I don't need all those. Okay, so 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 yeah, um, as, as much as possible. Um, your question is actually very valid. Firstly, um, our token standard for every asset is ERC one one five five. The normal volatile. Sorry, just, just sorry, 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 sorry. The normal volatile token which you see. For instance, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever, they are standard at ERC20 tokens, and those are actually very volatile. ERC15 tokens are very customizable, wherein um, they are backed by a real life asset. That's why they're called security tokens. They're like, they're like actual securities, but not represented by tokens. So they are, not as they are not even volatile at all, except after you've sold them to a liquidity pool. They are, not, they are very stable. So um, I think pretty much this answers the question. But I think that one must have confused or made it look like you know crypto was our was our was our token metric that, that that's I like, presented. But um, as much as possible, as a token holder, that doesn't concern you as a token holder because all you know is that you own an asset and you're going to be earning from that asset. Yeah, so one more thing is that this stuff is decentralized. Yeah. So when it comes to decentralizing real estate, for example, there are like many things to consider. For example, government can come and declare, oh, we're closing this place. How about people that already own it? Why do governments come and decide to close it? I want an actual this place where we wanted to extract oil, I can't remember it's in Nigeria. So what happened was they oh, yes, okay. evacuated all of them. And okay, yes. So in this case now, this is like government of Arabia, and they are usually going to pass. There are usually yeah. government compensations for that. Yes, they are. And that happens to anyone. So, so that means, are, are, are you going to come out and latch in? Sorry, uh, that was my day. Chip? What you should do is really is this. Because yeah. one, every law, every man in this country, by law, is yeah. owned by the government. Yes. If the government, if you don't have your, if you don't have your, your, your COO, even though you have governor's consent, the government, the government can wake up to their and say, this land, what do you use? If you have paid for it, there is only compensations for it. Like if you have paid for it, like only you have your certificate of ownership, there are compensations for the it. The question, the question is, the question is, who will be the owner? You know, we have the, who will be the owner? Very valid question. And you just understand that, 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 you so I prefer, and I couldn't just look up to the probably the Chinese or probably an American company so you can find yes, we are interested in this particular property for, for, for agriculture. And they revoke the license of probably uh, the, the survey of everything. There's nothing. So so this falls on our off-chain process. As much as possible, while we are doing our due diligence, we would make sure every property on the platform has all the documentations, four of them. Yes, we have our lawyers and we have our ex people in the SEC as well working with us. Yes. So I have a question. All right. Okay, sorry, uh, before we take your question, you have a question. Yeah, um, lovely idea. My question is, 
anything. Can you achieve your product without the customer knowing it has anything to do with blockchain? Maybe it's similar to your question. Yes, but I think I can do it. Abstracting. Yeah, just abstracting. Abstracting. All right, so, um, all right, I mean, so you can have it on the back end. I am just asking this question. Yeah, I have it on the back end, you know, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually a very uh, good suggestion. I, I think we we'll work towards that. But the thing is, like with the blockchain, I, I, I want to differentiate something here. Now, blockchain is not crypto. Yeah. yeah. Blockchain is not crypto. Blockchain is a technology. Right? Crypto is like. Blockchain is technology. So, as much as, as possible, we cannot remove the blockchain from you because that's the power. Which our product is powered on, and that's that's that has, in fact, building on the blockchain has made our product very trusted. Oh no! As much as possible. So I mean, I get your question that which are your suggestion that we should as much as possible. You know, users for so many users might be you know worried about the fact that you know they are token could disappear or you could lose the value or something. But users do not know. Yeah, they don't need to know about it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm asking, like, is it possible? It's possible, yes. It's very possible. It works for that, yes. It's very possible. It works for that. Yes. 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 Okay, hi. Um, so, I have one question. And it's based off your office. What do you call it? Off-chain. Yes. Yeah. So, how fast can you do that? How fast, how fast can, can you do that? Well, I mean, it depends on, you know, the um, okay. documentation and process involved for that assets. For instance, if the assets is in the states where we are not, we don't have our strong, most of our developers are in, in the East End, in the and let's say, for instance, that product is in the north. For instance, we have to get mobilization and go there and all of that. And, and we have to obviously get our lawyers, get to the offices to make sure that the land is properly registered and everything is like to make it. So, I mean, this process could take like a few weeks to a month to make sure that, to make sure that the documentations are you know, all set. If, they are, if it's a product that you know, new um, documentation has to be issued, for instance, the governance concept or the COE will take as much as you normally know, take in real life seven months, eight months, one year. So it's asking for you. Well, for various products, we would have you know this differentiation. Okay, because I know how tedious the whole um, that very tedious is it? There's actually one we are yes. processing now and it's like we are seeing eight months and we are like Yeah, because that is one thing that most people are coming to the real estate business keep forgetting that that part of it. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, and this, this is actually the stress we're actually trying to pick up from our users. Yeah. Well, it's now stressful. Yes, and I mean, have a, what, a central database of all businesses. Yes, yes, so I mean, we would take this thing to do these things for our users. So later, our users just end and own their assets. Uh -huh. uh, for our Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the point of offering a product. <laughs> That's the point of opening products. So, um, very quickly, I would ask like to you, very minimal, there's a particular bit of understanding I need to get. Yeah. First is from the point of view where, of course, if you have all the assets, again, I'm asking like a layman. Yeah. If I have a car, if I want to buy a car, as long as the person selling the car to me has all the assets, for, all the documents, documents. for the car. Yeah. To me, that person selling the car is the rightful owner, and I can legitimately buy from the person, right? And then when I buy that, I own the car now. Mm -hmm. So it basically translates to if somehow you have the all the necessary assets for a particular piece of land, it's easy to say you own the land now, right? And then you decide what happens with it, especially when the interest is divided among a lot of people. A lot more people have interest in the land or they have seen the land, but their say doesn't amount to anything significant. Um, finally, building on that premise, I need to describe um, some things that 
has happened in the in quotes, crypto space, being that even currencies or what's it called? What do we stable coins that are like them, that that are pegged in quotes, pegged to the dollar, and a lot of people very confidently buy these stable coins and own them with the mindset that they are owning. They have their money in in dollar, <laughs> right? And for some strange reasons, many of them have explanations, but people really don't care. Their money is gone, or something like that. For some strange reasons, the dollar is not dollar in again inside that currency. And um, I mean, Binance slept and woke up and decided that they are not taking a particular coin anymore. And it was Binance's decision. I mean, they own their, they own the company, they own their platform, they own the, they own literally own everything. The day they sleep and wake up and say they don't want to take it again, they are not taking it again. You will not beat them, right? So in this case, you have the, you own the land now because you've gotten the document and all of those things. And then we are having to trust you to tell us that oh, this token is equal to this percentage of the land. What is to say that you will not sleep and wake up tomorrow and decide that, okay, this token does not afford this land again? So, <laughs> and what do we do about yeah, it? Yeah, very good Binance question. Thing. Very, very good question, actually. So, first of all, Binance can afford to do that. They can afford to delist any, you know, token or whatever they want to do because Binance is a centralized exchange. Okay. Uh, yeah, they are a centralized exchange. So, they can decide whatever they want to do. So, um, there is a very there is a very clear difference between centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. Yeah, yeah. Um, like for example, I think the most popular centralized exchange is Uniswap. Uniswap cannot delist any kind of tokens they want to delist just like that. There has to be a vote amongst everyone in the ecosystem to agree to delist that token for various reasons. For various reasons, which maybe the founders of that token are acting malicious or something like that. That's when they can decide to do that. They can and it's going to be a proposal and everyone is going to vote. And then if you know the highest percentage wins, it's going to be taken straight. But Binance CZ can look up one money and say, yo, this token go down because they're a centralized exchange. This is the difference. What we have built is a decentralized exchange, which is going to be managed by everyone in the ecosystem. So token like, holders, yes, token holders and every like equity providers. So as an owner, okay. Yeah. Part of what I would have to be doing every day or very frequently is voting. Yes, now. You, if you don't decide to vote, nothing happens to you. But if you vote, I mean, you know your votes count. So that's it. And about stable coins, which you mentioned, I think you mentioned about you know, stable coin having to be before that time as well, you know, the impact sometimes. So the thing is, um, we've used, we used them, we've used them, an online oracle, chain link. So the distraction. So we've used like an, an online oracle chain link. Chain link feeds um, real-time data to blockchain platforms. And um, you know, um, telling data, it could be weather, it could be temperature of a particular area or something. So chain link also feeds data about stable, um, stable coins, saying that the stable coin is actually one dollar. So if, for instance, now you're buying a product of, let's say, for instance, a hundred thousand dollars, and it has the peg to 0 0.99. You know that is that's already like 99,000. Your 1,000 is gone. So now we have this chain link to make sure on chain that that stable coin is stable. And we don't just support any kind of stable coin. We support stable coins that follow the ERC20 standard. ERC20 standard. ERC20 standards are you know they 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 are not easily manipulated. Yes, they are not easily manipulated. And we use chaining to make sure whatever at whatever time you you're going to buy an asset, even if it's like 0 0.999 or 1.011, your value you're going to pay is at one dollar. Yeah. Okay, so building on this pairing, pairing, sorry. Yeah. I thought I was going to ask a certain question. Well you just ask part of it. Is there anything in Nigerian law that stops you from shutting down the platform? And telling people you don't have land again. Nigeria, no. You can actually shut down the platform and just tell people you guys have a 
So those smart contracts control, once you've built it, uh, you've created those smart contracts, you will relinquish um, power over them, yeah. right, normally. Yeah. So even if you want to shut down, if, because you've relinquished power from that smart contract, the smart contract controls most things. Yes. So until people vote and say, let's shut this thing down, that smart contract will not shut down. So that smart contract controls it. It does not have control anymore. <laughs> actually, you know, purchase any asset from our platform. You have access to all the language documents on the platform, of, the, of that asset on our platform. All the language documents are actually there, all the structural, mechanical, electrical, and um, architectural designs are all there. So it's something you can download. Obviously, the copy you have is the downloaded copy. It doesn't actually represent. So no more questions. 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 We have how many people want to ask questions? I can see six hands. Oh. So here's the thing. We can't take too many questions and you cannot make a question too elaborate. So I'm going to start from the person who has promised me his question is very deep. If your question gets too long, I'll cut you off. Do we agree? Yes. Me? Yeah. Okay. So I want to start with a question first. And then I have to say that So uh, my question is, mm -hmm. who are you targeting with this product first, right? So just answer that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so my target market, I already said that, that every single user who wants to, you know, own an end from real estate asset, but can't do that because of the high cost of entry into the market. Okay, so that would make for uh, just ordinary people like people. Yes. Yes. And yes. so, based on that, I would recommend that you work on your communication strategy. And the reason why I say that is that there's a lot of very Google things that have been blowing up right now. And even as a technical person, it's throwing me off a little bit. And so I'd like for you to study Opta FX. And they had a campaign, I think sometime last year or two years ago, where they tried to make crypto as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. Try to make it like your carpenter can understand crypto. And so maybe you can bring in a communication strategy, somebody that can every single like seemingly complex term, find the simpler term for that and build that into like your communication. It's, it's, in fact, it's a lot. You can buy something and no longer own it 20 years later. 
If you, in fact, I learned something recently. If you buy a land and you don't stress the land and you just leave it there, it's your own room. It's originally your own, but you don't do anything on it. Now, another person goes on there, starts to develop the land. Maybe you travel out of the country, you're not around and all of that. And then you come back many years later. With all of your documents, if the person has been on that property for, I think, maybe 11 years or thereabouts, that person becomes the new owner of that. Even though you didn't share, you didn't do anything, but the person is on that. And I should pass. This means actual buildings have been going to rent from and you know, perform activities on and not just dry land. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying that property, whether it's done no, I mean, or about, no, I'm just we're we're talking about, we're talking about time, you know, um, people not having to build on their land for a long period of time. No, 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 I'm using that to explain that the issue of property and real estate business is not white and black. It is multiple shades of grey. And so you probably want to have maybe like a surveying person on the team, a lawyer on the team, and all these other people who sort of like understand. Like it's very, very complex, right? And so you want to be sure that you are speaking into account all these multiple. Yes, yeah, so we have all those. Okay. All, all, right. all right. Let's. Yeah. So I have very brief. Yeah. Yeah. I have a problem we are offering your showcase. So um, say something about soft cap. That means you are going to have a basic and initial point of the for instance. I mean, there's no liquidity, right? Yes. So um, that is actually very important in the sense that it can become a, it can be a liquidity company, for instance, maybe the liquidity provider decides to pull out or something. Then in that situation, the token comes to you, right? I think you should switch from that um, um, method and actually use, uh, instead of using your tokens and so on, why don't you use NFTs instead? So you create a collection, like, for instance, let's say this is the token, the property rights you are offering. Make it a collection, call it um, whatever, and then like there are 10,000 pieces or 20,000 pieces of that, and then you offer that. That way, NFTs are in it, right? And they are all subject to uh, instances where they are like liquidity crunches or people for whom it um, liquidity pool and stuff like that. Because liquidity, ha having liquidity pools on like market makers, like, is not a really safe thing to do. Very good. For, like, um, real estate. Very good. I understand your question. And so I'm just going to, you know, so is there, is there a question or a suggestion? It's a question. It's a question and a suggestion. So can you also keep your answer? Yes, I will try my best. So NFTs, NFTs are yeah, so seven to one tokens, yeah. right? There are seven to one tokens. And as I said earlier, the tokens which you are doing, I mean, when which you are trying to, okay, which are trying to use a source, an upgrade of you have twenty and you have seven to one tokens. Yeah. So just as just as you expect us to, you know, um, use um, NFTs, we are we, like we are also using the one one five five, which is just like NFT tokens, and we are we can you know upgrade it however we want to. So you are basically there are two tokens involved now. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes, but I mean the the other you have twenty tokens, which are going to be used to incentivize the liquidity providers. We don't concern our access holders. We are not going to even market it to them at all, at all. Those are for like you know our global providers because like obviously I don't expect an asset owner to also provide liquidity. We are going to try as much as possible to sell our centralized exchange as a different product. All right. Yeah, and we are going to be provided by, by yeah. We are going to do that actually. We have a plan to do that. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. I love it. Uh, so my question is, what stops you from recognizing the same property? So like. But well, that's why you come I didn't get that. Like, so can I the same property? Because the investors start to put that they only know about the digital assets. They don't, we start to have control over the actual property. So what's stop, what stopping you from talking about what going to happen? So another security, so another security based on the same, like say you have a property, you create, you create the, the tokenized asset on that property. What stops you from creating another tokenized asset on that property? I don't understand the question. Right. So, like, so, like, so, like, so, not to do what people do in real life, you sell one property like this. What's going on in that? How about we, we can't do that? We can't do that. We simply can't do that because once the initial sale period is over, 
and you own your assets. That asset is gone. It belongs to you now. It does that. It's only now. Whatever document is in your name. Look, we can't. We simply can't do that anyways. I don't know how. You just have to trust our partners. Show me that I can find you. Did it happen, guys? <laughs> 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 
So firstly, um, I mean, right now we actually don't have an office at school. So no, 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 I mean, like, my time will be but this will have, it will have, like, the most of it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys, hold on, guys, hold on, guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my time will be able to have, um, I have a scout office, and, and also, um, all our addresses and everything is with public. So you can always, like, you have access to us, we are going to be out there all the time, everywhere. So today we have something legal that we will sign. Yes, we are happy to tell something. Yes. We are going to tell something, you don't have to come to your house and sign. I don't mind you. I don't mind you. I don't mind you. I don't mind you. So, 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 so first of all, for our users here, for our users, the only time where you have, the only time where you have, you know, any concern, the ability to preserve is when you've sold. As far as you're holding your token and you're earning rent from it, you're safe. Nothing, nothing happens to you, and nothing. I mean, your token is actually as safe as stable as possible. So, the only, so yeah. So, if you have sold your token. I mean, you don't, it's, it's now cool, now that's there for us to bear. That's there for us to bear. That's a point you gain more than 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 you gain more than
the block. Uh, uh, I have a few questions. Uh, um, you will block the next one. But before you move, make sure you go to the room. Um, get some of the last one. Yes, I know. You got it. Why you got it? 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 Why you got